before we get on to the state of the industry and challenges being posed by the weakness of the shilling, we've seen the Kenya Association of Manufacturers sign an energy reduction agreement this morning with a number of uh, companies and that to alleviate some of the cost pressures. What exactly are we looking at here? Thank you very much. Uh, Kenyan Industries this morning, uh, at least 19 of them, signed an energy accord with the Ministry of Energy. This is a voluntary accord or a voluntary decision on the part of the companies to take measures to reduce their energy intensity uh, with support of government. And the role of the association with this, uh, in, in, in this matter will be to monitor that the industries are actually reducing their consumption by the stated margins and that the support from the government is going towards supporting them in that regard. It is something that we're very, very proud of and very excited about. So we're possibly looking at a lowering of tariffs there. So government providing incentive for companies to uh, remain energy efficient and realizing benefits like lower energy uh, costs uh, as a result, but also reliable energy systems as well. Just what impact do you see this having on the national grid? Uh, you know, the, uh, because it is a grid that's come under considerable strain, given that it's only 19 companies that have actually volunteered to go down this route. At the moment, it's only 19 companies, but we expect that with time, more will, uh, more will sign up. The benefit will be, obviously, decreased costs at farm level. Mm -hmm. The national tariffs may not come down because that's a formula set by government, but for the specific companies, their costs will come down. But the other thing that they will get uh, a rebate in is uh, the implications of uh, the forthcoming uh, regulations on energy efficiency that are being developed by the Energy Regulatory Commission. If they take these measures, they will already have complied with the regulations and therefore it will not necessarily be applied uh, to them. With time, I think we expect that uh, a large percentage of the large consumers will sign up to the accord because it has the benefits in terms of government support to implement the measures that they sign up to. It comes at a very critical time for manufacturers with high cost of production brought in uh, by rising inflation, posing significant threat to the industry, a weakening shilling, certainly not doing the industry any favors either. Uh, take us through the kind of strain uh, the manufacturing space in Kenya has been under over the recent past. Um, yeah, the biggest constraint in, uh, currently has been the rise in energy costs, uh, especially because we're now having to buy more energy that is thermal and that is expensive given the uh, price of oil internationally plus the Kenyan uh, exchange rate against the dollar. So that has been problematic and we've seen an increase in prices uh, from about 10 US cents at the beginning of the year to now about 18 cents uh, at, uh, I mean, at, in, in, in September. But we also have uh, limited supply of energy. So at present, there's been some light rationing program about three hours a day for uh, three times a week for some, uh, for some, for some uh, locations. So that's been, that's been a challenge. But the thing is, at least there's been supply of energy. There are many uh, countries that don't have longer uh, rationing programs which affect uh, production but this rationing program plus the cost does make uh, Kenyan businesses a little bit uncompetitive compared to uh, neighbors and uh, competitors who have cheaper uh, cheaper power the other challenge has been the challenge of infrastructure but increasingly uh, we see that being fixed, especially roads we see roads being uh, fixed so there will be some improved uh, mobility for goods and, uh, and, and, and people, and that is something that is welcome. Wait. Obviously, the biggest thing that battering businesses right now is the exchange rate. The shilling has depreciated by about 28% uh, since the beginning of the year, and actually about 10% in, 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 in the last month, which of course, at this Kenyan business, has a lot of imported content, so that has been a bit of a concern. Take us through the kind of import levels and the challenges, uh, you know, cheaper imports are posing for the industry because we've seen cheap imports come through from China and Southeast Asia. And uh, certainly the, the manufacturing industry has been very vociferous in its calls to governments in terms of how government should come to the party to alleviate some of that pressure. Yeah. 
Our bigger concern about uh, cheap imports is some, a lot more about the substandard, substandard imports. That has hit a lot of local products, fast-moving consumer goods have been hit by uh, cheaper substandard goods and uh, sometimes counterfeit goods. That is illicit, uh, illicit, Ill illicit products and there needs to be you know, control uh, of the same. But of course, I mean, China is sort of the manufacturer for the rest of the world and that is, has been uh, problematic for not, not just business in Kenya, but businesses in, in the region. Our view is that, uh, local businesses can be competitive if it wasn't for these constraints posed by the external environment and that is something that government needs to to address with a depreciated exchange rate all imports are more expensive you know about 25 percent and we expect 25 percent more expensive and that should give some space for local products especially products that don't have a large a large import content. How, unfortunately, quite a large part of, uh, of our industries have a very large import content. So it is, I think it's distress all around. Mm -hmm. Where you've got uh, those kind of pressures, uh, you know, in the domestic arena specifically, and manufacturers needing to increase their market share and possibly increase their footprint uh, to harness more of a market moving forward, are they leveraging enough of the opportunities that uh, present itself when it comes to rising demand from the region as a whole? Kenyan uh, exporters or so goods um, make up about 30% 30, 30 of the intra commercial trade. That is quite significant. So Kenyan businesses have taken advantage of the opportunities that are provided by regional integration and are very present. The largest market for Kenyan produce is in uh, the region and indeed in Africa. More than 40% uh, of our exports go, go to Africa. So in that sense, uh, Kenyan businesses have been leveraging uh, these opportunities. There are also significant investors in the countries in the region and looking further, further afield. So it, we, we are proud of uh, the fact that they are reaching out. It is just that uh, these sort of pressures uh, will affect investment decisions made by companies, whether in Kenya or, or to, to go out, out of the country, and it's therefore critical that we manage them.